I've been waiting for this moment for 12 years. Hunting North America's hardiest big game animal that lives in the most extreme environments is something I've wanted to do my entire life. The mountain goat is an incredible animal. It lives in the most extreme environments found in North America. These areas are completely inhospitable to human life. The highest peaks, the steepest cliffs, and the sharpest mountain ranges the entirety of the year. When I drew the tag, I immediately called my friend Wes. We had a pact that whichever one of us drew a mountain goat tag, we would get to go on each other's hunt. Picking Wes to go along was a no-brainer, due to his experience with search and rescue, wildland fire, and mountaineering. Late September in Colorado can be unpredictable. This became apparent as soon as we arrived at our camp. The wind howled, cold and biting. Our glassing efforts in the morning yielded no goats. Friday morning, day before the opener, Wes, Kevin, and myself drove in last night, got into our camp about 11.30, set up, and decided we'd take this opportunity to sleep in for one day. Got up and about sunrise-ish and started glassing around. Haven't seen anything yet, so we're getting ready to make a move over to some other basins, get some different perspectives, go on a little bit of a hike. We opt to drive my truck to the end of the road to access the higher basins easier. Along the way, we pass the remnants of old mining camps. So we're gonna just head up this hill, kind of angle our way up, find a good spot. And then we're, we're gonna be shooting for kind of the top of that knob, okay. right there. And that'll let us really see into that next basin and also this basin. And then from there, we'll kind of loop the basin and go over to that pass. Top of that knob, can you kind of see yeah. all that basin in there? All that basin and all that, and this over here. Is there any trails or is this bushwhacking? Pretty much bushwhacking, but it's all like, you know, pretty short, open, yeah. walkable. It's just kind of steep. But... Yeah. So, yeah. Initial assessment is that it's probably a group of nannies and kids. It's actually the exact same number that was over there. After breaking out of the timber, we spot our first goats of the trip. This was an exciting moment for me as I felt a great sense of relief and an exciting moment for Kevin as it was the first mountain goats he had ever seen. testicles on them too. Oh, there's a kid. Yeah, right there on the so, cliff there. Yeah, that's for sure a, a group of nannies then. You won't ever see a billy with kids. To 
You say that the wind was relentless, just putting it lightly. It inhabited every part of our day. The enormity of the country cannot be overstated. If you ever wanted to go somewhere to feel small, this is the place. As we watch the goats disappear over the top of the mountain peak, we make our next plan. Our goal is to get into the next basin, potentially get another look at these goats where they cross to, and see what else is on the other side. Sometimes the grass is greener, in this case the mountains are steeper. Mountain goats spend a majority of their day on steep cliffs and mountain peaks, only moving on to the grassy slopes as they need to feed. Typically, herds of between 10 and 20 nannies and kids will spend more of their time on these open grassy slopes where they're easier to access. The billies seem to knock out a hard life for most of the year on the steep cliffs and the mountain peaks scrounging for what food they can that grows between the rocks. We watch one particular goat that we think might be a billy. He kicks out a bed in the rocks and somehow finds a flat surface to lay on. We decide to make our way down the mountain and back to camp. As we made our way down the mountain, it was a welcome sight to see my dad and uncle had arrived at camp with a camper. So yeah, dad, yeah, it's, it's now it's over there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so your goat's back. Yeah, I see We've that. We've been seeing it all since we hit the corner. Except. I think it's a nanny. Well, or get, it might be a get, nanny. Get a big scope and put it on. Well, were you watching it? Late, well, you were from the corner, obviously. But well, Wes and I keep going back and forth. I should say. I don't know if it's a nanny, but we keep going back. Well, and forth. we were just looking. Yeah, and that spot up there. Yeah. It looks like a goat until I get all the way to 36 power, and then it don't look like a goat. Well, anymore. there is a goat up there. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There. Right. I don't know if that you is might, the one, I don't but have it aimed at it right now. But. I'll get mine on it, but there, there is <clears> a goat up there. Yeah. So. Okay, and we just I, keep going. He saw it just a little bit ago, and, yeah, and I said, yeah. Oh, that's the same one, same place. And then I looked with the scope, and I thought, well, I'm not even sure that's a goat, which yeah. Casey wasn't sure it was a goat the first time he saw it. So, where it came from, though, no. so yeah, all 12 of the goats disappeared into one area, uh -oh. and then a little while later, once we come around, that one came out from where uh, they disappeared into uh, and it's a nanny for sure. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, really nice yeah. looking goat, though. It's yeah, yeah. Big old long when he was out in the sun, and, yeah. You know, with the sun, you know, it was real nice. So huh. they're out there. Yeah. 
Yeah, we saw him. It's not a question of are there any out here. It's just getting there. He had a pretty hard freeze last night. Woke up to our uh, water jugs frozen, uh, ice in our tents and trucks. So it's a cold morning for sure. Uh, I think it probably dropped down to the 20s, somewhere in there. So a little bit of a colder start. Hopefully we're able to find the goats on the east aspects, trying to catch a little bit of the rising sun after a cold morning. Down in the V notch. It's lower than it was yesterday. Oh yeah. Yeah, but he's still above that sketchy spot. If he came below that sketchy spot, I think we would have a good shot out of it. Like if he came another, like just down below that cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Two. We can probably get to him there, but you know. From where he's at, he'd probably take a tumble. To be honest. Yeah, that's not ideal either. No, that's uh, he's moved down. But if he came down it's another 50 yards, 50 yards, yards. Yeah. I think it might be yeah. be, it'll still be a sucky by Rolson, but it'll at least be possible right now. I still say he's not Yeah, we're rolling and taking a free fall off a cliff for two different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, well, at least we know where he is. I think we always know where that one is. Yeah. Unnecessary. No. Yeah. He might get him. We're going to shoot for this pass. Right up here to the south of us. When we get there, we're going to evaluate walking up that rock scree on the edge. Get some elevation on those goats. And if they do what they did yesterday, and moving around, we might be really close. Have a good view at them. So we're just going to have to make that decision when we get up there. Um, we're basically, at least as far as we've seen, there may be more goats running around this mountain than we know, but there's at least one billy with this group. So... That's why we're going after it, but it's mostly nannies and kids, so we'll have to be really cognizant of what we're looking at. the ridge in front of us looking into the next basin where the birds have been hanging out so we're just getting the rifle out getting ready not knowing what we're going to see on the other side and wanting to be ready for that so it's been a steep hole up here i think we've probably come up about 1500 vertical feet from camp so it's been a hard pull this morning but we're going to get get ready and take a look plan is to move over a high mountain pass and ambush the goats on a southeast aspect where we had seen them the day before. It took us much more time than anticipated to make it to the top of the mountain pass. Fall summit after fall summit crushed our hopes with every step. When we finally make it to the mountain pass, 
Wes and I slowly creep around the edge, looking for any sign of movement. All of a sudden, goats are spotted. To our dismay, they're moving away from us. Moving around the mountain at a speed that ensures that we have no chance of catching up to them. We continue across the talus slope, checking our footing and hoping that it's secure. We decide that our best course of action since we've made it this far is to set up an ambush and wait for them to come back around to our side of the mountain. They seem to move across this terrain unaffected and unwavered, while at times a human being can struggle. This makes the ambush tactic a logical choice since we know which mountain the goats are on. At our ambush point, we wait and watch for hours, resting from our morning trek. As we debate our next move, chaos suddenly unfolds above us. While this occurs, we immediately spring to our feet, anticipating boulders to impact our location. Wes and I scramble to locate the Billy. We finally do, but only as he disappears over the ridge, out of sight. Feeling defeat again, as if we had just missed our opportunity we had been waiting for all morning. We watch the remaining goats on our hillside for hours, anticipating and hoping that the Billy will make his presence known once again. As we pack up and debate our next move the second time, suddenly he appears on the ridgeline. He's approximately 420 yards away, skylined. Not a good or ethical shot to take. After we 100% identified that this was in fact the Billy we were waiting for, I got set up for the shot. Immediately upon setting up for the shot, I realized that I was in a very precarious situation. The angle was so high and the ground slope where we were sitting was such that it became extremely hard to get down on the rifle and be able to see the goat through the scope. I have frequently practiced shooting at angles, however, not as steep and upward as the angle that was now put before me. Once I'm ready for the shot, I ask Wes one more time, which one is he? He replies, third one from the right. No need to second guess, I squeeze the trigger. I see my first shot miss. Wes tells me, hi. He's still up, he's still up. I settle in and squeeze the trigger again. Right up, this time high. I'm extremely high. high. Even I see the rock scatter over the goat's body. Got him. This time, my bullet connects. Got him. Without hesitation, the goat drops immediately and begins a downward roll. The thing I was trying to avoid the most is suddenly happening before my eyes. Come all the way. 
Wow. Harder than I thought to set up that angle for the shot. Dude, and yeah, it sucks that he rolled that far. Hopefully he's okay, but look how easy the pack is is now. Right there's that pretty good bench right there. I didn't think he'll roll over that, but he just started with momentum. Yeah. Our plan here finally uh, came to. Been sitting here since, well, right now it's 2.20. We've been sitting here since 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock maybe. Um, yeah, we watched goats disappear over the ridge, and so we just decided we'd wait them out since they seem to be moving this mountain quite a bit, and we waited them out. They peeked over a few times, but never committed. Then something on the other side of this divide scared them, and they all ran over here real quick, sending rocks down towards us. That was pretty exciting, and then... They, they all finally calmed down. Some of them went over the top of the mountain. Some of them went over this ridge. One of them we, was, we were pretty sure was a billy we had been looking at the last two days. When he came back over, we got a good look at him. Horn structure lined up, facial features, muscle structure, um, testicles, every, everything. We saw the cues. Um, so as they moved across, we waited till they were I had a good open shot and I was set for it and we thought he was in an area where when I shot and he went down he would stay on kind of a bench that's on this mountain that we could get to and what ended up happening is he went down and never stopped rolled all the way down to within a hundred yards of us so he's probably pretty beat up but um, he's down here and that's just the way it goes sometimes it's not what was intended we didn't intend to send the goat rolling down the mountain but we're gonna make the best of it utilize all the meat, take care of it just like we normally would. Let's go check it out. So we brought the goat down off of its uh, resting place after its tumble down to the snow. Reason being, be able to keep the meat nice and clean, keep it cool as we start detaching it, and it's just a flatter, better work surface.
made it through the most technical part of our pack out across rock screes and down scree slopes. It was pretty difficult, but now we finally hit uh, the trail in the bottom of the basin. So we're probably about uh, 45 minutes, 30 minutes out of, from camp. It's gonna come as a welcome rest once we get there. It's been a long day at about 12,700 feet is where we spent most of the day, so we're pretty fatigued. Broke a sheath broke off. It. Take a pretty good tumble. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Better part of a thousand feet. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and hard terrain. <laughs> yeah. Landed almost at our feet though. Yeah. Uh, we thought that well there was a bench on that mountain below him and we thought, well he won't go past that bench. And, I mean once I hit him he like went down and he just never stopped. Oh. That was the 